Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Filter Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the Pixelate filters. So the first one's really cool. It's a color halftone, and this is how you can get some of those comic book halftone patterns. Now you have the choice to choose the radius of pixels. So the larger you make it, the larger the circles will be. And then each angle, the different color channels, you can set it at a different angle degree. So for example, I'll show you a few different results. If I set them all at 45 degree angles with a 20 pixel radius, you'll see what we get is about a max size of 20 pixel circle. And since they're all 45 degree angle, we don't get much color overlap happening. It's just the standard squares. But when I zoom out, I still get this cool color halftone of our original image. Now, if I undo that and I do a different example just to show you, let's do 90 degrees on channel one and 70 degrees on two and let's say 50 and then 30. So we have a little bit of different degrees on each channel. We should see four separate things happening. So as you can see now we see the cyan, magenta, purple, black, all kind of separating, but still creating these circle halftone effects, but we just have a little bit more color fringe going on. So it's really up to you. You can experiment with different size and combinations to get the results you want, but you can get these cool color halftone effects in this way. There's also, remember in the filter gallery, just as a side note, you also have in the sketch section, the halftone pattern effect, which is another similar option to look into. The next effect we have is crystallized. This is pretty self-explanatory. It just kind of almost like a stained glass window crystal, but not necessarily stained glass. It breaks up the image into these colored crystal shapes based on the colors around it. So you can create some pretty cool looking results in this way and you can choose the size of the crystals. So you can make large cell size, gets more abstract and smaller cell size gets more detailed. The next one we have is the facet filter. This one's kind of hard to notice what's happening at first. It tries to group similar pixels together and it's just one step application. So if I apply it a few times over, you might start to notice what's happening. We get this kind of pixelated pointy, like painterly effect and things, especially near the eyes, you can kind of see what's happening it's grouping together these similar similar pixels into their own similar clumps, but this is after like 10 applications, what's happening. And if I revert back to the original image, you could see how it, it did that. The next one kind of similar is fragment. Now this just takes the image, it's almost like a blur in a way. It separates and divides the pixels into four different areas and kind of blends them together. So it's almost kind of like a squared blur in a way, but almost more like a cross eyed vision happening. The next one we have is mezzotint. Now this is a cool kind of artistic touch. In the pop-up box, we can choose the type of stroke that happens. So we can change our photo into fine dots or grainy dots or different lines and strokes. So for example, if I just did medium sized dots, pressed okay, you'll see that it splits our image into these dotted clumps. It almost can kind of make it look like a pencil drawing or a dotted drawing. Another example just to show you what the lines might look like. If we do the lines, this is what those look like. Or if we do the long lines or the strokes, this is what those look like. So just different variations on a similar type of effect. The next one we have is mosaic. This could be a common one to try to pixelate or blur out faces or objects. But in general, it just changes your image into these cube cells and you can choose the cell size. So really large or small, it just turns your image into these square cells based on the pixel colors underneath. Finally, we have pointillize. Now this one will take your image and turn it into like a pointillized painting with a solid colored background. So the higher the cell size, the higher the dots, but if I do something normal like 50, you'll see it takes this photo, turns it into kind of like a pointed painting. One trick to get a different background color is if I press Command I and invert the original photo first, or go to Image Adjustments Invert, and then I add a pointillized filter, let's say of 20 like we've been doing, 
and then I press Command I to invert it back. In this way, we can invert that white background that we originally got and give ourselves a black background. So just a cool little trick you can do with inverting to change up that background. But that's a brief look at everything in the Pixelate effects folder, some really cool ones in there. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos. And in the next episode of this playlist, we're going over the render effects, which have some of the coolest effects in Photoshop. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.